Hi, and welcome back to India on 99.94, your home of Indian cricket content uh, on your podcast feed, on YouTube, and via the 99.94 app. I'm Nikesh Raghani, your host, BBC broadcaster and journalist from uh, the UK, and Sarah Waris of Wisden. Over in, uh, well, it won't be sunny at the moment in India. It'll be uh, nighttime over in India. And uh, many people, Sarah, watching that latest India game in the T20 World Cup in anticipation. Big game on a Sunday, prime time against the South Africans. And it just didn't go India's way, did it? You you kind of predicted that before this match. You, you thought this was the one where they're going to slip up in the group stage. Yeah. Before we begin, just, uh, you know, Nikesh has been named the Sports Journalist of the Year in the Asian Media Awards. So, you know, it's been a <laughs> huge privilege uh, doing the podcast with you. You've helped me out tremendously. I was totally new to this. So, well done, well deserved and huge congratulations. To thank you. you very much, Sarah. I, did, I didn't pay Sarah to, to say that at the start. So, no, <laughs> thank you very much. Thanks for everyone who's been messaging me on social media on whatsapp and and just getting in touch to say well done um look there you know loads of loads of great competitors competitors on that list as well who had been nominated for the award and yeah it was it was a huge privilege a great night and uh yeah I've brought home the trophy and and my daughter currently has it in her possession it's it's all hers now <laughs> so that's all yeah, good she must um be all but it was all going proud, so well because yeah the start of my speech, actually, I, you know, is one of those years where I don't want to make it all about this award, but just to bring it into context with the cricket as well. It was one of those years where, look, I've had a decent enough year, but I've been nominated for this award a couple of times previously and, and been on the shortlist, been to these awards nights. And there's been one or two occasions where I thought, you know, I've had a really, really brilliant year. And you look at the names on the list mm. and, you know, it's, it's not nice to boost yourself up. But in your own head, you think... I've I've had yeah. the best year out of everyone on the list. I, it's mine. This I surely am going to win it this year. So you know, you prepare a few things to say. You know, you don't necessarily have to write down a speech, but you kind of know what you're going to say, who you're going to thank. This time, I went to the award ceremony, and I, honestly, I just thought, I'm there's absolutely no chance this year. So I was enjoying myself. I'd had a couple of drinks, enjoyed the the starter course that was served first before the ceremony began. And I was just enjoying being with friends and colleagues. And then all of a sudden, the, the shortlist <laughs> went up for my award. I thought, all right, great. My name's on the big screen. My picture's up there. That's it. And then uh, they open the envelope. And it's a former colleague of mine who opens the envelope and another colleague of mine, former BBC, who's hosting the event as well. So they're both up on stage. The envelope opens. I'm looking at my mate saying, it's going to be one of these two guys. And then they call my name out. I'm like, oh, shit. I didn't have a clue what to say. So I kind of slowly walked up to the stage thinking about what what can I do? What can I say? And I thought, let's just look. It's a room full of British Asians, mostly Indians and yeah. Pakistanis, a few Bangladeshis, Sri Lankans in there as well. We've got to stick with the cricket. So I just sort of said, wow, this is, you know... Uh, a big shock. Um, I thought I had about as much chance of winning this as Pakistan do of, of lifting the T20 World Cup this year, which it didn't go down well with half the audience, but half were were laughing, half were booing, but it was all good fun. And and yeah, nice way to link <laughs> it into the cricket. But um, there, there were a lot of people on the night sort of saying India just looked like a machine. They keep on winning. But it wasn't the case against South Africa. And, and the same old flaws, Sarah, keep coming to the surface, don't they? India win the toss, choose to bat yeah. first, which I don't think was a bad decision. Some people disagree with that, but it's been the way in this World Cup, bat first, and, and you've probably got a better chance with the runs on the board and just the way the pitches are playing and the conditions. Um, but same old problems against pace on South Africa, uh, not on South African wickets, but on bouncy Australian wickets mm. against such a phenomenal attack from South Africa as well. And, and they were all over the place. Yeah. Uh, in the last uh, podcast, just before we wrapped up, we, you know, spoke about uh, how South, South Africa have had the number against uh, India recently. We forgot to mention that the match would be in Perth. So, you know, South Africa already had the upper hand uh, coming into the game and the troubles just began from the very top, right? From um, KL Rahul and, you know, him playing the maiden over just first up. 
put the pressure on Rohit Sharma. Rohit Sharma doesn't look the best T20 player this year. Um, and yeah, it was just the troubles just began from the very top. And actually, it's good to get her uh, defeat like that out of the way. I know you we would have wanted India to be undefeated and hopefully win the World Cup. But sometimes in a, um, you know, tournament like this, where tougher teams are coming up, it's good to get a loss out uh, like this out of the way, you know, which throws up so many questions. And there are a lot of questions, um, like, you know, KL Rahul's place, I don't see him getting dropped, Dinesh Karthik, the spin, and, you know, just the selection of Fuda. So... Um, yeah, what did you make of the selection of Huda? I know you tweeted something in favor of him. I'll just say why I wasn't against. Uh, like, I'll just quickly say why I didn't like the selection and then you can go on to say why you uh, favored the selection. First of all, you know, his selection just meant that there were no left-handers in the... Um, like, barring Arshdeep, there was no left-hander in the entire attack. And Kesha, with Keshav Rah- Maharaj in South Africa, they... You needed uh, you a left hander could have been advantageous for India, and it effectively I think made the bowling slightly weak. Um, he didn't bowl in the end, so it was baffling. You know, India could have preferred have would have preferred having uh, someone like Akshar Patel uh, to turn to even for a couple of overs. I know the whole matchups with the left handers and all, but uh, yeah, so. Well, look, it's yeah. You can. Yeah. I I agree with a lot of those points, and look, as it worked out, it it basically had no effect on the game at all. Um, you know, it just didn't wasn't his night. Uh, but he's he's such a fabulous talent that he's one of those guys that you just want in the team. The way he's been playing domestically, and and when he has previously been given the chance for India, he's done well. He's he's an exciting player, as you say, he can bowl. The fact he didn't bowl when there were left-handers out there as well shows how little faith the captain and, and the management probably have in his bowling ability. But he's he's capable of sneaking a, an over or two in there. And if South Africa can use somebody like an Aidan Markram, why can't India use somebody like a Deepak Kudda with the ball? So that was a bit baffling. I just think it strengthened India's batting. You saw Akshar Patel against Pakistan, for example, against the, the only other sort of strong side in this group, he just bowled the one over, got taken to the cleaner. So again, didn't really have any role to play apart from that one over and, and it didn't go well. So if you take that out of the equation, you put somebody like a Deepak Kudda in, you just ask either Ashwin or Hardik Bandia to bowl, you know, the extra over compared to what they did in that match against Pakistan. And, and you've got pretty much the same bowling attack and you've got one extra batter. So I just thought it strengthened the batting. Um, Akshar coming in at seven, sort of makes it feel slightly weaker. I know Akshar's capable, but Huda's a proper batter. He's exciting. I just thought it strengthened the whole batting. I just like having him in the side. I think he's a good influence. He's a good fielder on the whole. And uh, I thought he might be useful with the ball, which, you know, didn't prove to be the case. They didn't trust him. Um, but look, let's before we focus on Huda and, and the middle order, let's bring it back to the openers as well. We, we've talked about KL Rahul a lot. Again, another failure. I don't think there's any more really that we can add. Just didn't look great. You know, I've, I've sort of put out a tweet sort of asking people if, if there's any questions that they, they'd like to ask us when we record this podcast and stuff. And, you know, a couple coming in uh, about KL Rahul. Uh, earlier on, Mayor Rao on Twitter sort of said that why is he playing test cricket in T20 cricket? Um, he was picked for his aggressive batting style, which we all know that he has, which I think that's the key point. We know he can do it. We know he can be aggressive, but we just don't see it on the biggest stage. I mean, is he just a flat track bully? Is he a, a, a bully against the the sort of associate nations and things like that? He's, his record against the top sides isn't great. His record in T20 World Cups is terrible. And they just keep picking him time and time again. Look, a quick word on KL Rahul, and we'll talk about Rohit in a moment as well. Yeah, but 
you know it's funny that KL Rahul uh, over the last few years he said that the Punjab Kings management want, wanted him to bat a certain way and that's not the way he wants to bat Anil Kumble in a very recent interview uh, said that you know that was never the message to KL Rahul so um, you know it's it's kind of strange or even baffling to know why KL Rahul suddenly has gone from becoming that aggressive batter to this stat batter so to say um and uh, if the management punjab kings management didn't give him that message then who really you know asked him to change his approach was he like scared that you know if he doesn't score runs or um if he is aggressive then he lo- lose his wickets and you know a spot his spot would be in danger P- possibly that could have been a reason why you know he turned to um batting this way um i i really don't know what she, what kl rahul is doing in the team that i saw another tweet that said you know in 2014 he was a good player in 2022 he's a good player you know he's not been able to make that transformation from good to you know extraordinary and a match winner and right now it would seem that you know him batting at the crease uh doesn't really give faith to the indian supporters or the fans that you know he would take india uh, over the line and he's the vice captain um everyone knows that i'm not really uh, in favor like i would want hardik pandya to be the vice captain do you think pant is going i don't to think i don't think hardik or... pandya is far away from <laughs> becoming the vice captain of of the t20 side at least you know franchise captain i know pant's been a captain before but he's not been sort of playing he's not been starting in the <laughs> t20 team of late so you know to make him a vice captain um, even if it's after this tournament and and you kind of then do look to him in your plans i think hardik is settled in this side he knows his role he knows his game he's matured so much i i think he's the the natural leader the next one in line after rohit steps down and look i mean i sort of put out a tweet saying look i hope he doesn't get any personal abuse because he he's a nice chap he's a he's a wonderfully talented cricketer he does well in test cricket he's going to probably have a good ODI career when he finishes up i mean his t20 i stats are not bad but it's just in the big matches against the big teams where he sort of falters and then then he builds up those stats um in meaningless bilateral games and and games against uh, teams that are not so strong as well so that that's the only reason we're sort of saying this um i mean suds 71 on twitter as well as has got in touch to say there's no room for personal abuse but clearly he's not in the game his head is elsewhere do you think mm. it could be a mental thing uh, that that sort of a mental block maybe just a fear of yeah. extra fast bowling and bouncy pitches yeah it did seem that way didn't it like against uh, pakistan they made shine afridi look more uh, fearful than he than he seemed he wasn't fit clearly um and uh, even against netherlands even today you know just playing the uh, dot ball and what's even more surprising is you know uh, rohit sharma probably knew that kl rahul um, isn't possibly in the best mindset and yet uh, kl rahul faced the first over of the match uh, which was a little surprising to me uh, because you know just go up front for first over just get at least a few uh, hits if not um, 10 16 15 runs at least you know just get off the board uh, it just piled on the pressure on rohit sharma and um, i would have liked to see you know rohit sharma take strike first up possibly knowing that uh, kl rahul is not in the best mindset so that was not the baffling mood a um, move in many of one of the many strange decisions i would say and you know it's these small things which come back to you know have a um, like affect the end results so, yeah yeah i mean no one's really talking about rohit at the moment is is you know it's all about kl and it's all about you know the the other team selections uh, the sort of you know the the 50-50 calls really is it aksher is it huda is it ashwin is it jahel you know all these kinds of things are, are coming into the debate more um rohit's not had a great time in t20i's of late um maybe that has got to do with the pressure that 
is being put on him by KL's failures at the other end and, and lack of intent. Um, maybe somebody like Arisha Bunt coming into the side would help Rohit. Um, but, you know, let, let's, I mean, he's not going to be dropped. So I suppose we, we can't really scrutinise his position mm-hmm. in the side. If Rohit plays and, and he will play, he has to open. So it's not really up for debate. I mean, look, today, Kohli played a couple of really nice shots. There was that cover drive on the up, uh, which was beautiful. 12 from 11. He's not going to do it every single time, is he? Despite uh, how great this man is. Um, it was just one of those nights, really. And got undone by uh, that man, Lungi and Gidi as well. The Lungi dance uh, taking place, I'm sure, uh, over in uh, South African towns and cities while that was all going on. Um, Huda, failure, didn't last at the crease. Three ball duck, Hardik, didn't quite come off for him as well. I mean, look, Wayne Parnell bowled beautifully, I thought. Lungi and Gidi was great. Rabada didn't get the rewards in terms of wickets, but again, you know, just a threat throughout. It was just a rounded brilliant bowling performance from South Africa. And before we discuss them and and, and how well they bowled, uh, we'll take a short break here. You're listening to Cricket's Conversation on 99.94. Whatever your team, we have the show for you on podcast, YouTube, or on the 99.94 app. We have India, England, South Africa, West Indies, and now Sri Lanka covered. If you want to find us, the best way is to follow us on social media at 9994DM by downloading the 9994 app or Google 99.94 on podcast. We speak cricket. So as I was saying, Sarah, before that break, just, just a brilliant bowling unit that South Africa have got. I mean, India have talked about in recent years about having this conveyor belt of fast bowlers and stuff, but, you know, it's more for test cricket, really. It's been more of a success in the longer form of the game. Mm. When you look at T20Is, I mean, South Africa in these conditions, outstanding. Lungi and Gidi, four for 29. Wayne Parnell, three for 15. Put out another tweet earlier as well. Um, just by memory of Wayne Parnell, really, from three years ago, I had him on my show. We did a show previewing the uh, 2019 Cricket World Cup. Uh, we're at a bar sports bar in central London we took the radio show on the road we had an audience there and we had Wayne Parnell and uh, Monty Panesar and various other guests on the program as well and Wayne Parnell at that time he he looked he was such a nice guy but looked so downbeat didn't really seem happy in life was just moping about playing county cricket under the radar no one sort of really paid much attention to him um didn't really think he was ever going to play for South Africa again. And then to, you know, three years later, be lining up in the World Cup. And what a performance from him. I mean, left arm seamers obviously worth their weight in gold in this form of the game. And, and somebody with the skill that he has, the pace that he has, just the variations, three for 15, just just brilliant from him and, and Ngidi as well. Yeah, and we always knew that um, if there was one match that India would lose, could lose in the uh, group stages, it was against South Africa. Like, this defeat didn't really come as a big surprise because we knew the quality of their bowling and they did live up to their potential. And yeah, overall, as much as we criticise India's batting, uh, credit were due and the South African bowlers were, were just brilliant today, yeah. They were brilliant. Surakumar Yadav continues to be brilliant as well. There's there's no, I mean, doesn't matter what you say, you can have all the Rizwans you want. And and Rizwan, you know, he's a talented player and he's done well and he gets the runs. But when it comes to this form of the game, there's one best in the world right now, and it is that man, Sky. He just, he walks in mm-hmm. in any situation, whether you've lost early wickets, whether you've built a platform, he just knows one way. He just comes in, starts middling the ball, hitting the ball to awkward areas, playing with the field, making their captain, whoever they're playing against India, the opposing captain, making them tinker with their fields every other ball just to try and, you know, negate his threat. And he just seems to find a way time and time again. And if it wasn't for him, I mean, look, he gave India a fighting chance, 68 from 40 in a total of 133 for nine. Um, and, And this in a a lineup where only two other players got into double figures, Roy with 15 and Virat mm-hmm. Kohli with 12. Everybody else got single figures and, and most of them low single figures as well. 
just brilliant. Didn't matter if the wickets were falling Gee. around him. I mean, I'm, I'm running out of superlatives for this man. Uh, how, how do you describe him? How do you describe his batting? Uh, just there is sky is the limit for him. I think this phrase was just, you know, coined for him. Uh, and if he's not named number one batsman in the world in the ICC uh, list this week, I think he'll be out on Wednesday. Then uh, I'll officially be done with the ICC rankings. Uh, Rizwan, but I think the, this uh, currently... The ICC on... ranking, yeah, uh, yeah they're, they're rubbish anyway, because... Yeah. It's in T20Is all they look at is volume of runs the same way they would yeah. in test cricket and and ODIs as well. Mm. And even in ODIs I mean the fact that strike rates don't come into it and impact and when you've got so much analysis available to you with the likes of Crickviz and all the rest that is out there you know they they mm. sort of have their impact players and and even when you're watching the IPL you you see the the sort of impact mm. points that this player has had the most influence on today's game. He might not be the run, top run scorer, might not be the top wicket taker, but what he did when he did it in the situation, mm. that won this side the game and, and that was it. So surely they could look at stuff like that. I mean, it's just quite lazy just mm. to look at runs, isn't it? Because, you know, Rizwan, for all the runs that he does score... Pakistan fans themselves blame him sometimes for eating yeah. up too many deliveries and losing them games because he's scored 68 of 58 and it's just not good enough. Mm -hmm. So it's almost yeah, like it's, yeah, yeah, it's one orange of those. cap. Yeah, the yeah. Uh, it's yeah. almost like the orange yeah. cap. You know, they you they don't care if a person has helped uh, win the team games or not. It's just how much runs you score. And mostly, obviously, it'll be the top order batsman. Uh, winning those, uh, winning that award. So it, it, it's bizarre. And yeah, uh, coming back to Sky, you know, what, what's interesting is, I, I don't know if you get that uh, show uh, where, you know, Gambhir, before the match started, Gambhir was talking about Sky. Obviously, Sky was in KKR when Gambhir was the captain. And he was uh, talking about how uh, Surikumar didn't have much, like, um, much of a range he's called the mr 360 now uh when he just came onto the scene he would just look to sweep every delivery and uh you know so from there to now his transition where he can hit anytime anywhere and today it was almost a mature knock from him you know uh it wasn't like you know he's just coming in and just went after the bowling he did but he took his time in and still he batted with an insane strike rate so um it's uh bizarre that you know he wasn't there in the team long before he only made his debut in 2021 and also um like i just tweeted before coming on to this uh, uh coming on for this recording that uh last year india like there was so much talk that you know Rohit Sharma saying change the intent and everything. Mm. It's only uh, Surya Kumar who's you know changed the batting template so to say. The top uh, obviously Kohli was in the best of forms re till recently, but the openers you know they've not really uh, accelerated, and India could well have been out of the tournament by now if not for Virat Kohli's insane knock against Pakistan and you know so the whole build up for the last one year about batting approach and everything um, is almost like you know it nothing's come of it except for you know sky rising to the occasion and after the World Cup I would like like to see a whole new like changes being made with the whole approach, you know, getting in the Samsons, the Shaws, even Rahul Tripathi, he's like a wonderful batsman. No, uh, not biased because he was in KKR, but he's genuinely a very, um, I I find him a very talented batsman. And uh, yeah, so after the World Cup, even if India go on to win the World Cup, I would like to see, you know, India well, adopting yeah, a whole They have to approach, overhaul it you know? anyway, because yeah. you're right, yeah. Rohit's getting on a bit. He's, you know, even if he's still playing cricket by the time the next T20 World Cup takes place, he doesn't really need to keep playing T20 International. Mm. So you'd expect him to hang up his T20i boots anyway. And then Kohli might go the same way, might not. But whether he does or not, you know, do they have to maybe look at his position? And if they want him to sort of carry on playing for India in, all, in the other two formats for as long as possible, maybe this is the one to give first and foremost. 
Um, but even if he carries on, look, KL, you wouldn't have thought would have been there. Um, there's going to be various changes uh, through the side as well. So yeah, do do expect to to see some of that. I mean, that intent you talked about, we kind of only saw it in the England tour, didn't we? In those white ball games mm. in the England tour, yeah, where they had great success doing it as well, and they you know won both the ODIs and the T20I series, and that was praised. And you know, we we thought right, we've turned a corner here in Indian cricket. They they're just going to go for it no matter what, but. It hasn't kind of transpired since then, certainly not in the tournaments that they've played in, in the Asia Cup and here as well at the World Cup so far. Um, but it's just the pressure, I suppose, of the big tournaments and and those players just going back to what they know best. And that is that ODI approach, really, isn't it? I mean, I wouldn't quite call it test cricket like some people have. Um, you know, Kale <laughs> Rowell is still trying to score at least a run a ball, um, but it's just not coming off. But um, yeah, it's kind of more more an ODI approach, really, at the moment. Um, so look, 133 with the bat, a fighting chance maybe still below par. You wouldn't have thought India had any chance of defending that. But then after the interval, they just came out all guns charging. That man again, Arshdeep Singh. And we'll discuss India's bowling effort today after another short break. If you love the language of cricket and want more, then head over to the 99.94 app and you can hear all of our podcasts and cricket commentary. We're adding new shows all the time and covering cricket series from all over the world. Be the first to hear all of our announcements by following us on social media at 99.94 DM. Welcome to Cricket's Conversation. So Arshdeep Singh, I mean, what what a cricketer this guy is. What a bowler. I, mean, I mentioned earlier having a left arm seamer in the side is great in T20Is and, and most good sides will, will have one of, of high quality as well. It's not just about having any old left arm seamer, but he is a high quality left arm seamer. He swings the ball early on. He's got enough pace. I mean, people call him a medium pacer. I mean, he, he can hit sort of mid to late 80s, mm. which is decent pace and only these Australian wickets you get that extra bit of assistance anyway with the ball zipping through on most of the surfaces and that extra bounce that you're able to generate just from bowling the right lengths two early wickets again and uh, India right back in the game what were you thinking at that point um especially you know the second wicket uh went up to like India took a DRS and um Ashdeep was like, it. it's probably yeah. a little high. Yeah, he didn't want it. It was a little high. Uh, but then Ish Kartik and Rohit Sharma, uh, they went up and India got that wicket. So, points to them. Um, so, uh, yeah, Ashdeep is one of, you know, India's match winners. We've spoken about it. Just a personal um, anecdote. Um, so, my father doesn't really follow a lot of cricket. I think... Uh, Probably, you know, when India, India Pakistan match, I think that was the first time he saw Kohli bat the full overs and, you know, see what Kohli is capable of doing because he's not really, uh, he watches cricket, but not really like very keen. So, you know, that was the first proper match which he saw Kohli doing Kohli things. Uh, and today, when Ashdeep was bowling, he's like, wow, he, you know, he's a star. So, you know, for for someone who's been out of cricket for so long as he's been, and then to say that, okay, Arshdeep is a star, you know, just uh, selecting him as out of the so many options and saying that uh, he could go on to uh, become a star for India is, um, yeah, it shows that, you know, how he's been impressive and, yeah, overall. It's that, I mean, sometimes that yeah. sort of eyes from the outside is is more yeah. important because we're so involved in cricket. We see so much of these cricketers. We would have seen them perform well on certain occasions. And then sometimes, you know, they, they might go long periods without. And look, that happens in cricket. But when you're coming in from the outside, you're just taking more mm. of an objective look at this bowler and looking at the skill set that he possesses and, and his action and the yeah. deliveries he's bowling and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I get that. And he's been getting lots of praise from everyone, really. I mean, some legends of the game have been really talking up mm -hmm. Arshdeep Singh. I mean, he looks quite innocuous, his run-up, the, the way he delivers the ball, but there's a lot of skill there. And to get those mm -hmm. two wickets, they're not just any old wickets, Quinton de Kock and Riley Russo, who have been banging form, not just in this World Cup, but even in the build-up 
to the World Cup as well. They're the two danger men, and he did that against Pakistan as well with Baba and Rizwan. I mean, what the, yeah. the scalps he's picking up are just unbelievable. Um, and it got re- India right back in the game, uh, three for two. They were at that stage, two wickets in the over. And then Temba Bavuma, who's like the KL Rahul of uh, South Africa at the moment, although he's the captain, so he probably can't be dropped at this time. Uh, again, another another poor innings from him, 10 from 15, just can't buy a run at the moment at the top of the order. And, and three wickets in the power play, you don't often come back from that, do you? Um, but yeah. then that partnership, there was always going to be a partnership, wasn't there, between Aidan Markram and David Miller, but Sara, it could have been broken earlier on. Both of them went on to get half centuries. Markram, 52 from 41. Miller, not out, winning the game for South Africa at the end, 59 from 46. Uh, drop catch from Virat, missed run out from Rohit, the two senior men in the side who, I mean, you'd back mm. Virat 99 times out of 100 to get that. And the same with Rohit. I mean, he could have almost walked up to the stumps and, and taken yeah. the bales off. Mm. That's how far... He was uh, out of his crease at that time. I mean, just a couple of mistakes, which, you know, haunted India in the end, really. Yeah. I, uh, with Kohli, it's, you know, weird that he takes superb catches. He, he took one in the warm-up against Australia, which left even him surprised. And then he, he just drops. It wasn't a tough catch today. He, um, he fumbled and then he dropped it. And then he, you know, goes on to drop the easy ones. Um and the overall fielding has just been too poor for India in this um, World Cup. Even against Netherlands, we saw uh, Dinesh Karthik miss uh, behind the wickets, miss a couple of chances. I think they were stumping chances uh, against the spinners. So, you know, the overall um, fielding has... We, we spoke about the fielding of the women's team, but the men's team, the fielding has been well below par, uh, especially, you know, after the uh, exit of Sridhar, the fielding coach. So... Um, do you think it was the cold that played a role? But, you know, the Indian team came to Australia almost 20 days before the World Cup, uh, before their first match, and to uh, get accustomed to these conditions. Um, what's been going wrong for them on the field? Because yeah. there's no Jadeja, yeah. But then the others, like Kohli, okay, Rohit Sharma, maybe not the best fielder but then there's Hardik Pandya even KL Rahul has dropped a couple of very easy catches you know, against Australia against South Africa in the series so what do you think well, is look, going the condition I don't think it's the just fielding. the cold I think it has been sort of quite wet especially in Melbourne as well when, mm. when India were there and you know it's, the ball gets slippery it could, you know that that can play a part I don't think it's the cold and I thought Dale Stane made a great point with Kohli's drop catch today he I I, I spotted it as well just before Stain said it when the slow motion replay came up. He just closed his eyes at the point that the ball hit his hands the first mm. time. And that sometimes you can mm. just jag and move like a millimetre or two when you're doing that and just lose where the ball is exactly. I mean, it hit a good chunk of his palm, but just maybe not quite in the sweet spot just because of that split second when... He closed his eyes, he blinked, whatever it might have been that, that caused him to close his eyes. It was just one of those things. And, you know, yeah, he, he would have taken that probably more than 99 times out of 100, you know, if, if 999,000 times out of a million, you know, and <laughs> yeah. 999, do you know what I mean? Out of a million, he would have taken that. It's just a freak one off and, and you wouldn't expect him to drop that. I don't think the cold's playing a part. I mean, yeah, there has been some poor fielding from them. There's been some poor fielding from quite a few of the sides, but I think the slippery conditions may have had a part to play mm-hmm. because it's been quite wet in, in most of the places in Australia, apart from Perth, where they were. And uh, it's just been quite unseasonal. So yeah, that could have had a part to play. I mean, look, we all know what David Miller can do. If if you give him a chance out there, <laughs> um, he was going at a runner ball. He almost did a Coley, didn't he, today? He was going at a runner ball for most of his innings, less than a runner ball when he was, I think he was like 28 off 31, and then started to pick it up and hit those three sixes and um, took them home in the end. I thought one strange decision, though, from India was, I mean, you look at India's mm. bowling figures on paper, and most of the, uh, four out of the five, uh, yeah, four out of the five bowlers, outstanding, really. I mean, the most expensive out of the first four was Hardik with 7.25. And if your weakest bowler is doing that, you're on to a winner, really, because you've got Boovy bowling 
at 5.72. Arshdeep bowling at sixes. Mohamed Shami, I mean, wow, one for 13. Mm, yeah. And that too ruined a little bit because he got hit for a boundary off the first ball of his final over. But once again, Boovy bowling at the yeah. death. We all know about Boovy's death exploits in recent times. It just hasn't worked out. It's not going to happen. It's not a marriage made in heaven. Boovy and death doesn't go together anymore. Why did Arshdeep Singh bowl the uh, yeah. the over? You know, I think was it the sixteenth, seventeenth over, seventeenth over? 17th, I think it was. 18th. Yeah. And then the last three overs of the innings, you're not going to have the only specialist death bowler you've got in your yeah. squad bowling any one of those last three overs. I mean, it's ridiculous. He should be bowling the 19th and maybe Shami for the 20th. Why is Boovy bowling the last over? Yes, it shouldn't have got to that and whatever else you might say, but you're defending a low total. To take it that far, they did brilliantly well. We'll come to Ashwin briefly in just a moment as well. He was expensive, did have the catch dropped off him as well, and then that went on to to cost India as well with the way Markram played. But the situation it was, I mean, Shami did well just to keep them in it, really, bowling that 19th over, did well to leave six for the final over. And if you had Ashdeep Singh coming and bowling that final over, yeah. or even if he bowled the 19th and left more for Shami, say, to bowl the 20th or whatever, might have left him 10. Or, 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 you know, nine or eight or something, you know, a little bit more to play with. It just might have been a different story. Not that Boovy got smacked completely, but he just, you just didn't have the confidence that Boovy's going to be able to defend anywhere near six, did you? Yeah. And um, also, you know, Ashwin bowled the 18. So uh, Makram got out in the 16th over. Yeah, 16th over. So, uh, I felt that, you know, Ashwin should have come into the attack right after that and bowled the 17th and then at least left the last three for the quicks, uh, even if you didn't want to, even if you wanted to bowl uh, Bhuvi for the end, at least, you know, there would have been an over of Arshdeep and you never know the, the kind of things that pressure makes you do. Um Against a new batsman, uh, um, I would have, uh, you know, given Ashwin a greater chance of succeeding and the la uh, over by Ashwin just sealed the game for um, uh, South Africa. So, yeah, bizarre, um, bizarre tactics. And that was not the only tactic which was a little baffling. Uh, I know the whole, uh, you know, having Huda in the side, um, like I wasn't in favour of it at at least India would have had an extra bowler, you know, a specialist bowler um, in Akshar Patel. I know all the matchups again. I'm repeating myself. But um, if you don't want to bowl Vuda, then why not have someone like Akshar in your side when you knew it's always a big risk going in with five specialist bowlers and uh, any of any one of them can have an, have an off day. So there wasn't really an option. If Akshar was there, he could have bowled a one-off. Uh, like he could have gone for 20 but he could have gone for five also we never know so uh yeah yeah it's just look it's, that was one of those there were little margin moves, there were little things percentage things which you know india didn't quite get right and, and some things didn't go their way during the game but it's always going to happen when you've only got 133 on the board i'll, I'll say that again so yeah. it was it was really that batting effort which cost india in the end if they had 150 the way they bowled mm. today, even with Ashwin going for over 10 and over, they they would have won that game. Um, South Africa didn't really look like they could get the, that 150. They would have had to take more risks as well, which could have meant them losing more wickets in the middle. Um, and, and Miller, as I say, was struggling for the first part of his innings, really. Didn't really get going. Um, you know, the catch off Markram, which was dropped. You know, the, the various little things. 150, I think, would have been too much for them to chase down. But... Look, it wasn't to be. It's a, it's a defeat out of the way early. And uh, India go once more. Bangladesh up next as well. It's not going to be easy. Bangladesh mm. aren't quite the Bangladesh that we've seen as a big threat in recent times. But, you know, it's, it's a slippery one, isn't it? It's, it's, you know, four points on the board. Yes, it looks good right now. But there'll be a few nerves, won't there, going into that Bangladesh game? Mm. 
Yeah, especially you know how this tournament has gone. Someone asked me, "Will India uh, defeat Bangladesh?" I was like, "You never know the way this tournament has has gone. Like everything is happening. Uh, Afghanistan haven't played a single match, but they have two points on the board. So uh, we've seen everything in this World Cup. You never know what happens. Quickly, what changes would you want to see? For me, it'll be Pantin for Dinesh Karthik. We didn't get time to talk about Dinesh Karthik, uh, but he. disappointed against pakistan could see the game through and today um, probably you know they could have sent in ashwin and then kept dinesh kartik for the last few overs but then uh, 9 and 15 i think he played not really you know what you expect from uh, see, one I, of your I, specialist I, batters yeah. and i mean Dilo, yeah. you know he's and, going to get criticized now as well because he's been brought in for yeah. this finishing role and and it's not quite worked out really um i mean the injury that he looked to pick have picked up towards the end the back injury will that play a part you know is he just going to be unavailable and it's a no brainer you have to put rishab pant in the side i would want rishab pant opening so i'd take kale rahul yeah. out put rishab pant there and then you got to put huda somewhere in the middle and whether that means he i drop re- huda replaces- and i get in akshwa Akshar yeah, Patil. no, but thing is, yeah, but Huda's already in the side from today, mm-hmm. right? So if you bring in Rishab Pant for KL Rahul, Rishab Pant for DK, and I'm no, no, getting for, in for KL Rishab Rahul, Pant for KL Rahul, for, yeah. right, at the top of the order, and then DK was already in today's side, as was Huda. So you keep Huda in, and you mm-hmm. bring in Akshar Patel for DK, and then you've still got that extra batter in there in Huda, and you know Akshar is not yeah. bad. as well uh, and Huda gets to bat one up the order which might help him a bit more cuz he's not you know the finisher kind of role he doesn't really play that well um and maybe you could save Hardik a little bit lower down the order if if you want him to finish off um so look there are options but that that's the way I'd go I'd I'd like to see Huda given another chance bat one position higher um and bring in bring back in Akshar just that extra option with the ball um and uh Kale Rahul I, I think his time's done but <laughs> we know with the Indian selectors and Rohit mm-hmm. as captain they don't like to make these big calls in big tournaments so uh they'll probably just put Pant in for for Karthik and that'll be it right maybe maybe Akshar back in for Huda yeah. That's Chahel, probably Harshal? what they'll do Harshal could have been an option today couldn't he instead of yeah, Deepak yeah. Huda he, he can bat he can obviously bowl yeah. in the middle overs especially so that that could have been another option i don't think they're going to do that i i think what they will do is bunt for dk because dk can't play mm. kale will keep his place and they'll probably bring akshar patel back in for huda yeah there's my prediction that's the 11 let's hope i'm wrong <laughs> let's hope that's i'm wrong that's the changes i see happening yeah yeah absolutely well we we'll wait and see um india versus bangladesh next up uh, on wednesday and uh we'll be back again to talk about how all that went down and and hopefully another india victory with uh, six points on the board at the time uh, you next hear from us but uh, that's all we've got time for on this episode thanks very much for listening